guys, what is going on? Blossoms back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drives. Now, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but the year of 2022 is finally coming to an end. I mean, we are only about three weeks left, uh, less than 30 days. I want to say about 20, just a little over 20 days um, till 2023, which is kind of crazy. Um, looking back at this year, um, I thought I had a pretty good year, to be fair. Um, 2021 was depressing. Uh, 2020 was atrocious. But 2022, it's a pretty, pretty decent year, to be fair. I did a lot of new things. And uh, I want to look back at the year in prize cars. Everything that you see over here from the Chrysler Glacier all the way down to the Bristol Fighter T is every prize car that we have gotten and we are going to get in the future. Uh, and yeah, man, I mean, let's have a look at this. So what, what are the highlights that I can see straight off the bat? I mean, the Remax Navera, once again, I don't think it's that useful, to be honest, just because, you know, 2022, one four wheel drive european revolution barely any events that fits for that kind of car but let's look at this year in general like we had some real big bangers like okay in the very yeah, banger Peugeot 208 wrx was a banger demon was a banger obviously i'm biased but i'm gonna say that Chrysler Yumeira was kind of a half banger, I would say, because it's a car kind of like the, the Remac we don't use very often. Um, the Mercedes C11, that was a banger. Um, the Pikes Peak, obviously that's the best price car released this year, at least so far. I feel like for the rest of the year, we're only going to see maybe one more legendary price car. Like, after the Zenus and the Bristol, we're going to end off with a bang, and then boom, we're into 2023, where we're probably going to start with a bang. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the Motul, yeah, that one was pretty good good um sesto was pretty good hennessy was really good as well anyway guys i want to review every single prize card that we have gotten in the year of 2022 i did a similar video to this about three months ago but now that the year is about to end and we have you know everything here i mean i'm, I'm pretty sure the Zenus and the bristol are going to be given out at the end of the month um and like i said i feel like we're only missing one car maybe one more banger and we end off the year that's it but guys let's review every prize card that has been given out this year so we have great value these are prize cars where I hope you won because they are actually very, very useful. I use them all the time. They win me a lot. They are game changers. Uh, provides value are prize cards that are still very strong, but they're not called upon every single time. It has its moments that speaks for itself. Collecting dust and of course question mark. Uh, remarking on you know if we didn't if we don't even remember if the prize card was given out this year basically. So first one is the Chrysler Glacier 300. I'm gonna say it has its moments. Um, now one thing that we need to remember with American four wheel drive standard tire cars is that the citadel and the chrysler uh and the cadillac cts coupe uh have gone up from ultra to epic so because they have gone up from ultra to epic this makes the chrysler 300 glacier one of the best american four-wheel drive standards along with the acura zdx both of these cars are very very heavy but they handle relatively well they're not great cars in the grand scheme of things as in ultra four-wheel drive standards but they are better than what they used to be i think it's an average car for the american collection uh saloon with medium ground clearance it has its moments moving on is the remac nevera and for the remac nevera provides value i mean honestly i'm not gonna say great value because the thing about the nevera is it brings value um but only when it is useful and the main thing about the remac nevera is that it isn't useful most of the time there isn't a 2020 daily there isn't a european revolution daily there isn't a um you know how there's american dailies they're french dailies they're german dailies well there isn't a croatian daily right like it's, it's an interesting one, because when it is needed, um, basically four-wheel drive daily, um, then yeah, it's a very useful car. And the same thing when you apply it to, um, and there's no European Revolution, I think I've said that already, no European Revolution daily. And it's the same thing when it applies to clubs. When it comes to clubs, the most common requirements, front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, um, you know, German, American, French, uh, ultra-rare, you know, like, the Nevera kind of evades a lot of the key or most common requirements in very big game modes like clubs and multiplayer events. The only time the Nevera is actually useful is when and that's the thing, right? Hush doesn't like to make super OP cars useful all the time. Sometimes they'll try and, you know, annex those cars. So the Nevera is really only useful in a high RQ or drag situation European Revolution event or rest of the world. It's it's quite niche. Like, it's a, it's a very good car. When it's used, it's, like, amazing, right? Like, no question. But it's the question of how often it is called upon, which isn't that much. So I'm going to say provides value. All right, next up, Vauxhall Forenza Baby Bertha. 
Collecting dust, really, I don't think it's the most useless thing in the world. It could handle better, and it did benefit from the fact that it went down in RQ because all the performance tire and slick tire epics went down in RQ uh, with PL15. That being said, I would say that it isn't very useful. I really only see it when it is a 1970 event or a Vauxhall event in clubs. That's it. Uh, Skigera is... Uh, okay, uh, Aston Martin 177. Ooh, collecting dust, to be honest. I, I love the car. It is a great dragster. But the thing about it is that it's a legendary version of the Aston Martin Bulldog, where you really only use it in a situation where you have uh, a test bowl because it has really good MRA and has a really good top speed. The main thing about the 177 is that it has a very low 0 to 60. And when it comes to legend, a uh, very bad, sorry, a very bad 0 to 60, so not low. Um, but the thing about legendary is that it's about fine margins. Everything is about fine margins. And I want to do a direct comparison. The 177 and then initially uh, and then recently we had the resvani right um the resvani uh is kind of around that rq limit just three rq difference and you can see there's a one second difference in zero to 60 obviously the zero uh the, the top speed is a massive massive difference but the resvani is going to beat the 177 in basically one mile quarter mile uh quarter uh, and half mile uh, and the 177 will be the better car in the test bowl the, the thing is both of these cars they kind of seem to falter in many places um i would say for the resvani Beast X, I'm actually going to put it in collecting dust as well. It might be useful to some people, but the problem with the Resvani Beast X is that maybe it was useful to you for a couple of weeks because, like, one month after the car was released, we got the Hennessy, <laughs> which is the way better American. So, I'm going to put both of these cars in collecting dust. Once again, guys, if you disagree with anything that I say, it's my personal opinion. You can let me know, you can let me know down in the comments below. All right, uh, Jaguar XJ220. Eh. Um, all right, Bentley EXP 100 GT. It's great value. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic value. Once again, I've said this so many times. Um, I, this is one of the few cars where I was wrong about. I thought it was going to be useless. Obviously, Bentley has a really bad reputation. And, you know, it doesn't have a top speed of 200 miles per hour. But it is still a beast on the one mile. Just don't put it on a test bolt. That's it. It's an... It's the top speed is high enough where it will provide value, very, very good value on a one mile. Um, Tokyo drag, half it's strong. And the thing about it is that it's, it's called upon quite often. And I think the main reason for that is because um, of the year and the country that it's from. Green Exhibition gets a lot of events, um, and yeah, it's a very strong car. All right, next up, Lamborghini Urus. It's gonna be great value as long as the Porsche Cayenne GTS, whatever it's called, uh, is not released. As, uh, by the moment that Porsche Cayenne GTS is released from PL15, the Euros is going to go down in value. But for now, the Euros is still the best SUV, so we're going to keep it in great value. Next up is the Nissan. I'm going to say it has its moments. It's a pretty decent twisty car, but it's not a twisty specialist. There are lighter cars out there. 0-60, to 60, I would say, is relatively weak for 77RQ. Handling is really good, though, but the MRA is like, meh. Um, I would say it has its moments. It's definitely not a car that I think about very often. I have it, and I'm not going to max it. I think I've already owned mine for about a year now, and uh, yeah, I just haven't maxed it yet i'm not gonna max it anytime soon but it has its moments especially if you are a japanese collector like corn this will be a very useful car for you uh, but in my opinion i don't think it's gonna go any higher than it has its moments it's a mid-tier price car uh next up the peugeot 208 wrx <laughs> It's really good. It's it's really, really good. I mean, it's got a ridiculously low 0 to 60. It handles very well. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. It provides value. And the main thing about the 208 WRX is this. It's all surface tires. Um, well... It's tough because I put the Lamborghini Urus in great value and that is all surface tires. But the Lamborghini Urus, you know, it's it has that, you know, five plus seaters, SUV, it's the best in its niche. But the 208 WRX, I mean, I don't really, you don't use the 208 where you use the Urus. You know what I mean? You use the 208 in a motorsport situation and a hatchback situation. If you want to use the best of the best off-roaders. And I always find myself always just using like the Escudo Pikes Peak instead because off-road tires are so much better than all surface. But at the same time, it feels wrong to put the 208 below the euros i think they should be the same i mean okay in an off-road perspective then the 208 wrx just provides value but we need to remember that because it doesn't have off-road tires yes it's a car that i can use in the rain yes it's a car that i can use on road um it still has a really low zero to 60 it still handles pretty well okay fair enough I put it in great value, thinking more in a versatile standpoint, you can use it not only off-road. Uh, but if it was only an off-road situation, then obviously the Escudo is a car to go to. Go to. Uh, Alright, next up is the Rover 220 Coupe. Um, collecting dust, to be honest. It, it's, it feels like it's pretty good, like it handles well, but like... 
I never use it. Like, I sometimes I even forget that I have it. Um, so for that, I'm gonna put it in collecting dust. Now, next up is the Renault Sport Laguna BTCC, and that is going to be great value. Now, this car is fantastic. It's it's light, there's a low zero to 60. Uh, still the best front wheel drive car in the game, or the second best if you want to compare it to the Audi that was released recently. Uh, handles incredibly well, fantastic car, great value for sure. I maxed it out for a reason. Um, and then we have the Caterham RST V Levante. Now, again, I wanted say that it's collecting dust because the problem with this car is that for most legendaries you're only gonna have them at one star unless you know it's amazing i don't know the cater mrst here's the thing it's got really really good mra really really good mra it's got a really low zero to 60 i would say that it's like a slightly better version of the resvani beast x it's it's lighter has the same zero to 60 it has about the same mra a lower top speed but it handles better these two cars are very very similar Similar. And then the other thing you need to remember is that the Caterham is really expensive. It's 95. Um, you might disagree, but I think it is collecting dust. I have it in my garage and it's not even one starred. Um, I understand once again that it has good MR. I understand it is very light, but to only get value out of this car, you will need to max it out. Uh, at least max out the handling. So at least a, what, six epic investment to get value out of the car. If you can put in those handling car uh, uh, upgrades, then yeah, it'll be a great car. But for now, it's collecting dust, buddy. All right, next up, the Ram Rebel is going to be... It has its moments. I mean, once again, very similar to the Glacier, right? Uh, a lot of off-roaders went up in value. A lot of them, like the Lancia 037 and the Ford Escort, they've all gone up to Epic. So because of that, it actually actually increases the value of the Altraers that were lower in RQ before. Um, so yeah, the Glacier, the Ram Rebel, they're pretty useful. And they're easy to max out as well. Uh, Yamira, ooh, tough one, tough one. Collecting dust, honestly. I'm, I'll be honest, I never use it. I have it, I never use it. I use it in one daily. That's it. Um, and you know, you need to remember, I've a maxed out Koenig said yes go as well. I mean, once again, okay, I would say that the Yamira and the Levante are very similar in a sense where, like, you get value out of them if you can max them out or put in the upgrades. If you don't put in the upgrades in them, you're not gonna get value out of them. Like, you, you, like the Remac Navera, right? You can have that at one star, and it's still gonna blitz so many cars in the game. The EXP, I only have mine at one star, and it's already fantastic. So, the thing is, right, these two cars at one star are already really good, and putting in six epics would make them unstoppable but the thing about these two cars is that they're only unstoppable when you put the epics into it uh, at one star they're kind of useless not gonna lie so i'm gonna put them both in collecting dust now the main reason why the yamira is gonna be collecting dust is because it operates in every situation is where the nevera operates in uh so when you can use this you can use the nevera you'd rather use the nevera anyway um Renault sport rs01 provides value it's a very very strong twisty car very very great handling on that 97 stock um also it isn't too too expensive like it's not like a 100 rq or 98 97 rq 94 i think it's a very worthy 94 rq car mr is good as well the super banana as many people call it all right next up the porsche kain turbo porsche kain turbo i say it has its moments uh it's actually not bad it handles well and it's lighter than a lot of the uh pl15 uh kains that were added um so it does have its moments just not very often mainly because it has all surface tires not off-road tires off-road tires definitely gets all the glory uh Next up, Alfa Romeo 8C, yeah. uh, Dodge Challenger Demon. Now, the last time I did this video, I put it in great value. But, am I, is, it gonna is it gonna stay there now that it has slick tires? Oh, provides value. It hurts, it hurts. Um, like, the thing about the Challenger SRT Demon is this. It's still, like, amazing value for its RQ. It's one of, if not the best dragster for that lower legendary RQ, like, 80 to 85. Still really, really, really strong, okay? Like, I would still pick this over the Resvani on a quarter mile any day. The problem is, I would say that the stocks of the Demon did go down, mainly because I own this car, and I know what it's like to use it all the time. And now that it has slick tires, I will be honest, I use it a lot less. It like there's a little event going on in top drives right now where it's like all drags it's like the billionaire space club whatever it's called right and it's limited to performance performance tires i would have loved to use my demon there but i can't not anymore um 
And yeah, it's just unfortunate. I use it a lot less in clubs as well because it's not classified as a five-seater as well. Um, and the other thing about it is that the Hennessy, the Hennessy is just so much better now. So the Hennessy is the great value car. I'm gonna move the Demon down one. Aerial Atom, I, you know, it's very similar in a sense to the Caterham. You're not gonna get value out of it unless you put in those upgrades. The thing about the Caterham and the thing about the, the Aerial is that these are twisty specialists, but the most important thing about being a twisty specialist is good handling. And you're not gonna get the good handling out of them unless you upgrade them, you know what I mean? So, collecting dust. Uh, next up, Nissan Skyline collecting dust. I'm sorry. I love that car. It's Godzilla, but come on. I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember the, the, the last time I used this since I won it, and that was like, what, April? It's been a long time. All right, next up, Aventador SVJ. It has its moments. Um, kind of boosted by clubs because clubs is Italian like every other day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the best Aventadors in the game. MRA is pretty decent, four wheel drive, and it has over 100 handling. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, Infinity Q50 Al Rouge collecting dust. Honestly, if it's not a Japanese saloon event, you kind of forget that it exists. Um, and then next up, the Porsche 911 Evo. I'm gonna say, ooh, this is an interesting one. Where would I put the Evo? I'm gonna put it in, it has its moments. I mean, as it is on paper, it's a strong car. Good MRA. It's a very like RQ90 car. Like when I think of an RQ90, 91 car, I think of 200 miles per hour, 3.0, 95. And it's, yeah, it's about that. 3.195, good MRA, uh, high top speed. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Decent car. I'm not going to use it very often. I mean, I didn't win it, so I can't use it. But I don't ever see it get it used very often. Um, but it, if it is like a... What is it? Where is it from? Like, if it is a 90s event, then yeah, it would be, it would be one of the best cars to use. Um, next up, 22B. Yeah. Uh, Escudo. Escudo, definitely great value. Fantastic car. Um, then with the Volvo C303. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a car that I, I, I don't forget. Like, I don't forget that this car exists, but I never use it. Um, but yeah, how could you ever forget? that this car is in the game right um then we have the skyline the skyline's an interesting one i would say it has its moments um it handles very well and it has benefited from the fact that it went down in rq from the pl15 rq changes because i'm pretty sure that the last time i made this video pl15 wasn't included um so I mean, it's okay. It's 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 okay. Uh, handling's all right, um, but it's not the lightest car in the world. It doesn't have the lowest zero to sixty in the world. It's a very mid-range ultra rare, but it's very easy to max out, and it loses by fifty a lot. So because of that, I would say it has its moments. Uh, next up, the Vettel. Uh, the Vettel is an interesting one because I don't use it. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's like question mark, question mark, question mark. I would say it's collecting dust. Um, in my opinion, I just rather use the Cayenne over the Vettel. That's it. Uh, now. The Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. It has its moments, to be fair. It, it does have its moments. Now, the main thing about it is, is um, there are not a lot of American legendaries in the game. Like, there are very, very few. Like, when you compare American legendaries to German legendaries or British legendaries or even French legendaries, they're not a lot. Um, and the ZR1 is one of the better ones, to be fair. It has, you know, the lower 0 to 60, a higher top speed, uh, and it beats a Hellcat. <laughs> uh, to be fair, like, if it's a legendary and it beats a Hellcat, like a Hellcat Charger and a Drag, you're gonna get some value out of it. You'd be surprised, man. Like, a lot of the Vipers don't even beat the Hellcats and the Drag. I know this, because I own all of them. Um, what else? Uh, you know, the DNX and the Acura NSX not gonna beat a charger uh in a drag and this is this is the epic srt charger i'm talking about the hellcat um what else gt90 is going to like they're, they're not a lot like gt90 zr1 um hennessy's now obviously resvani but yeah they're not a lot they're not a lot so zr1 does provide some value i would say uh definitely a lot of value if you max out the handling but that's that that's the same for all the prize cars that you see over here uh ct3 club sport collecting dust honestly uh mra really good top speed's very high but handling isn't very good to be fair like i said when i think of a 90 89 91 i think of like 3.095 unfortunately that's 3.091 not good enough um next up is the primera and i'm also going to put this in great value i'm just going to do the same for all of the front wheel drive epics i think they all fall in the same category uh, i've maxed all three of them <laughs> and i use them all the damn time uh now the impreza group a i'm going to say provides value uh it would have been great value if it remained high ground clearance but it's not anymore it's medium ground clearance now um so for that i would say it provides value it's a good four-wheel drive off-roader for you know a bargain price of rq but once again you really only get you're only gonna get the full um 
value out of the car if you can max the handling at least. Uh, Alright, next up, Subaru Impreza. Uh, and then the Donkavort, DAGTO40. This one's not too bad. I would say it has its moments. Why? Because it handles better than these two cars over here, and it's 5 RQ cheaper to use. Um, Doesn't have the MRA that the Caterham boasts, I understand, but in a super twisty situation, I mean, yes, the Caterham is actually still better, because it's still very fine margins between both of these cars. In super tw twisty situation, Caterham is a better car but also i need to remember that there's a 5 rq difference right like it's tough you know what i'm actually gonna move the donkey board down because the reason is like 90 95 if you can't use a 95 you would probably just use a 95 anyway um 208 t16 great value uh best prize car this year without a doubt um and then the mercedes c111 uh yeah great value as well uh very very cheap i'll try to use a great dragster obviously it isn't a dodge charger 3 but still you know it's a decent car for the test bowl a cheaper aston martin bulldog if you will um yeah i would say great value i mean the main thing is that that, you know it's a very cheap car to use for its rarity ultra rare and it's very easy to max out um and it knows what it wants to do so, uh, and then with the audi r8 rear wheel drive it did get a minor nerf um it doesn't get a hundred handling anymore i think it's like 80 like 99 or something like that like it got a minor nerf or is it 3.1 i think it's a slower zero to 60 it got a minor 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 nerf but i still think it's great value one of the best epics in the game with performance tires and rear wheel drive i'm gonna keep it in great value next up nissan gtr i'm gonna say great value too honestly Honestly, it's one of the best Japanese cars out on the market right now. All of the best JPT prize cars have not been released yet. And I think that is what's going to be the final prize car of 2022. And I think it's going to be probably one of the best Nissan JPT prize cars. I think that will be the final one. But for now, this is the best one that we've had so far. And it's great value. All right. Next up, Lycan. Collecting dust. Yeah. Co collecting dust. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna put it in question mark for a second, but it has a really low zero to six. It'll be decent for the hairpin. Uh, then we have the Lancer Evo and uh, Lancer Evo. Great, I might be I'm gonna be biased. I'm gonna be biased, but I'm gonna say great value. You can actually make the same argument for the Lancer as the argument that I make with the Caterham and the uh, the Aerial, as in like this car will only be super 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 useful if you max out the handling. But at the same time, this is medium and it's saloon and it's four wheel drive and it's not expensive to use for a legendary. It's on the lower end of 90. I'm still gonna put it in great. Some people might disagree with me. I think I still think it's one of the best cars in the game, uh, even if it's one star. Uh, next up, Audi Quattro S1. I'm gonna put it in provides value mainly because they're just better off roaders to use nowadays. But it's still a very good car. Medium ground clearance has a low zero to sixty and it handles well. Uh, so a very strong car. Next up, the Koenigsegg CCGT. Koenigsegg CCGT. I'm gonna put it alongside the Porsche for the same exact reasons like they're both very strong But they're not the best in their class like European Revolution brought a lot of better Koenigseggs And I know that the CCGT is not European Revolution. It's um World Expo But World Expo still brought a lot of better legendaries anyway, so um, and you know And and they're not even prize cars. I'm talking about Thomas Muller or the 935 So the Koenigsegg CCGT decent car love its moments, but not very often uh, But it is a strong car for what it is. It's what I expect from an RQ90. Uh, next up, Sesto Elemento. Sesto Elemento, probably the best Lamborghini in the game, honestly. I'm gonna put in great value. Um, I'm kind of sad that I missed it. I, I missed it. It's a, it's like I said, it's the best Lambo in the game. It's got the lowest 0 to 60, and you combine that with four wheel drive and good handling um with performance tires as well it's um yeah it's it's respectable i'm pretty sure that it's also very light so yeah pesto elemento sad to not win it um because it is probably the best lamborghini in the game better than the centenario as well uh next up the geo store <laughs> yeah it's crap um the thing about the geo store i mean let me just show it to you right here for a second look at that i mean uh, the main competitors is the saturn sky and the europa 47 it doesn't win anything so yeah, I had that ready. Uh, that car was crap. All right, next up, the Bravado. Whatever, man. That's just filler. The Hummer H3 Dakar, it's filler. It doesn't have four-wheel drive, and it's really heavy. I don't care. I'm not going to use it. Um, Subaru, uh, it's that, okay, the funny story about the Subaru, though, I totally forgot that this was even given out. And the, the funniest, the saddest thing was that it was given out recently, like within the last like month and a half. Um, and yeah, I totally forgot that this was a fifth anniversary car. Like I, I had to look back at my garage to even see before I record this video if I even had that car. Cause I was like, wait, did I even win that? Um, yeah, dude. 
garbage. All right, I'm sorry, chicken. I'm sorry. Uh, next up, Peugeot 205 T16, great value. I mean, honestly, anything four-wheel drive off-road tires is a recipe for success, uh, especially if it has a low zero to 60 and great handling. Uh, next up, the Hennessy Venom. The reason why I put the Demon in provides value is because the Hennessy Venom exists. The thing about the Hennessy Venom is that the GT Spider is that it, it is an American version of um, the Koenigsegg Gesco Absolute. It's not gonna beat the Koenigsegg Gesco Absolute, it's still worse than it, but it's gonna get it's gonna be close. And whatever the Koenigsegg Gesco Absolute beats, the Hennessy GT beats as well. Just not the Koenigsegg Gesco Absolute. Uh, Alright, next up is going to be uh, the Ford Capri uh, Turbo. Once again, question mark, question mark, question mark. I, I won this like yesterday or two days ago, I just maxed it out. Um, the problem with the car is that it's just not gonna beat cars within its RQ, it just doesn't handle as well. Uh, and then the Eagle. Now, this is yet to be determined, but I think it's going to have its moments. It's a four-wheel drive Super Ed that handles very well. Um, I think it will have its moments, to be fair. I don't think it's going to be fantastic, but I think it's going to be okay. Um, next up, the, Lo the Lotus Motorsport Elise. I think it's going to be either provides value or great value. I'm going to say provides value, mainly because there's so many epics of slick tires and amazing handling now, where it's starting to feel like, you know, a hundred handling for an epic is almost like a dime a dozen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, still so over a hundred handling, um, you know, uh, mid-range epic, pretty easy to max out. It's really good. All right, next up, the Zenus and the Bristol. Zenus is just going to be trash, honestly. I mean, if I'm going to be critical of the Caterham and the Aerial, I, I feel so many, I, I know so many people are going to disagree with the kid room. I know it. I know it. But um, the, the Zenus is a worse version. Once again, think of it through a one star standpoint. It's going to have like what, 92 handling? That's garbage. That's actually garbage. I don't care. It's useless. Um, okay, you know what? <sighs> I, it's not sitting. I'm going to move the kid room just up one. Okay, you can you can keep your peach pi peach pitchforks. Okay, I'm gonna move it up one mainly because I feel like the Caterham RST is a card that I feel like a lot of people will actually bother putting in epics to upgrade anyway. And if you do, it will be a good card. Uh, and then last but not least, the Bristol Fighter T. Uh, a lot of people might disagree me, with me on this one too. I think it's going to have its moments, honestly. Um, a lot of people, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, the Bristol Fighter T is going to be useless. The handling is crap. The thing about the Bristol, the difference between the Bristol and the Zenus is this. The Zenus is going to be a twisty car, without a doubt. The Bristol Fighter is not going to be a twisty car. The Bristol Fighter is a dragster. That's it. And... The car could have 77 handling and it wouldn't make a difference to its value. Um, the main thing about it is that it has the key components of what makes a dragster great. Good MRA, a low 0-60, to 60, and a high top speed. The 0-60 to 60 may not be the lowest thing in the world, but I can guarantee you that it has a very high top speed because 225 is high. Uh, and it probably has really good MRA as well, very similar to its epic counterpart. So... If it's somewhere along that 100 MRA line, like between 98 to 107, I, I guess, um, it's going to have its moments for sure. It's going to be a great bargain for a dragster. Sub 3 seconds, over 200 miles per hour, with, and I'm assuming, uh, about 100 MRA. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to be it. This is going to be the final prize card tier list video of 2022. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I always enjoy these kind of tier list videos, man. Let me know down in the comments below what you your opinions are going to be if you agree or if you disagree anyway hope you guys have a great day i'm gonna stay safe wash your hands and blossom out peace bro this song just makes me so happy <laughs> me too Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jet box back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jet box back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Sit back, relax in my Bonneville